Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And today we are doing our third author showcase. I am very excited to have the showcase today for a number of reasons. One, I get to meet some new friends. I get to reconnect with an old friend. And also this month is pretty special to me, um, especially when it comes to my book, Reality Check. So this month is April and it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And that is the topic or one of the topics in my book, Reality Check. Um, I myself am a survivor of sexual assault. And so this month is very important to me because I feel that everybody needs to be educated about sexual assault and understanding exactly what that is and what the effects of it are, and also how to be able to help yourself and help someone else who might have been or could be a victim of sexual assault. When we look at the statistics for sexual assault, it tells us um, as of 2020 that every 73, sex, every 73 seconds an American is sexually assaulted and every nine minutes that victim is a child. So when we think about sexual assault, this is not something that does not happen on a daily basis. And unfortunately, it happens more often than we know. Every 73 seconds, it says an American is sexually assaulted. And every nine minutes, that victim is a child. Some more statistics that I want to share with you is that Everyone that is affected by sexual violence, it could, be men, it could be men, it can be women, and it can be children. Now, some people say men, really? But yes, men can also be sexually assaulted. And even though women and children are the highest of victims that are reported of sexual assault, men can be victims of sexual assault as well. Some more that I wanted to share with you is that when we look at the victims, younger people are at the highest risk of sexual violence. It says that the highest age range for sexual violence or sexual assault victims is 54% of them are between the ages of 18 and 34 years of age, 18 and 34. That's a very large gap and I myself am 44 years old, so I'm right outside the range, but for 44 year old um, women or victims, it's 28%. So 28% for ages 35 to 64, for 3% for ages 65 and older, and then 15% ages 12 to 17. Unfortunately, we have to add ages 12 to 17 because 12 to 17 year olds are at the highest risk of being victims and being victims repeatedly because of their age and because of their minorities. And most likely it's somebody that they know or unfortunately that they are very close to. So I just wanted to share that with everybody for this author showcase because this is very dear to me. Um, I write about my experiences in my book, Reality Check. And even though I turned it into a fiction and gave my experiences to the characters in reality check, it still is a story of being a survivor, of learning how to trust again, learning how to love again, and it's full of drama. There's so much going on in this book outside of the main character that you are going to have a character in the book that you're going to be able to relate to. We have women, we have men, we have children, we have teenagers in my book. Um, we have some very strong female leads in Reality Check, including the main character, Tony. Um, it's just a good book. And even though it's not a fiction book, even though it's not a biography, uh, most of the experiences in the book are ones that I have shared myself. And the characters in the book are people that I know personally that I have mimicked the characters um, behind. So that's my book, Reality Check. Please, please, please take the time this month to educate yourselves, but not only educate yourselves, but educate your children your daughters, your sons, your, your whole family about sexual assault, because sexual assault happens in, in many different ways, not just rape and not just by penetration. Um, so please, please educate your families, please educate your children. And most importantly, please make sure that you know how to protect yourselves, what things to avoid, and how to help someone if they ever become a victim of sexual assault. 
So we are going to move on into learning more about our authors on this third author showcase on the SUIS. Let's get going with this. Ms. Vicki, I see you over there smiling for <laughs> us. How are you doing, young lady? How are you? I am doing awesome. I am so honored to be on this showcase tonight with all these wonderful authors, uh, ladies, and the gentlemen. And uh, so I, I'm doing great. I have no complaints. I'm just excited to talk about my book, Gracefully Broken. So thank you for having me. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, let's see, Miss Valerie, sh sh tell us who you are and tell us um, what brought you here on the showcase tonight. Where do you, where do you want to talk about tonight? <laughs> so um, I'm Valerie McAllister. I'm an author. I am a film producer and director. Um, my daughters and I have a organization called Generational Words where we support um, positive expression, help people write their books and do films. I'm really excited to be here. My passion is really about women and healing. So I think I'm in the right place. Very nice, very nice. Um, we love to um, hear from our authors who have personal stories, um, like the ones that I share in Reality Check, but something that's personal to them, something that is really dear to them. Um, I find that those are the books that we love the most. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Mr. Desan, you are our only man tonight. Tell us, tell us about you. You're on mute. Sorry, just needed a, needed a moment there. Um, <laughs> but um, um, so yeah, I'm Desana Hanu. Um, and so I am uh, an artist of many hats and, um, and just uh, released my fourth collection of poetry called Shackled Freedom, Black Living in the Modern American South. So just excited to be here with everyone. And, uh, and, 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 you know, and looking forward to learning about all of the authors that are here. Thank you. Um, Desan, I want to give you a big shout out because um, I think I think you're comfortable being the only man on, on the platforms with me. Um, you're here on the author showcase today. And then uh, two Fridays ago, you did the girls night with us um, with the beauties of love and less lingerie. Um, we had an excellent time. Mr. Desan did some uh, spoken word poetry for the ladies on the girls night and they enjoyed him thoroughly. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you some more, um, Mr. Design. Miss Lenise, hello, lady. How are you? I am fine. Thank you so much, Miss Tiffany, for having me. And thank you for um, sharing, you know, that important information. I think it is so um, vital that um, we hear that and we talk and we have those crucial conversations, especially with our daughters and our sons. We can't forget about our sons. Those, it's very important to have those conversations. So I'm so excited to be on here, excited to learn about the other authors and um, to share about my book as well, um, Seven Day Journey. So thank you so much. Looking forward to um, sharing and hearing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I am definitely excited to get to know everybody tonight. So I'm going to start off by asking everyone why you became an author. Why was it important for you to write your, your books or to write your stories? I'll start. Yes, Miss Um, I've been writing since I was nine years old. Uh, started off writing poetry and uh, yeah, I started off writing poetry. And the reason that I started writing in the first place was because of my upbringing. And I too, most of my uh, stories, most of my books, Gracefully Broken is my fourth book project. And uh, with that, I am co-authoring with four, three other ladies, three other ladies. So. Um, the reason that I became an author is because I grew up in a domestic violence home. And I don't know if any of you saw the movie Precious, how she uh, started acting and doing things to escape her environment. Well, that was the same thing for me. I started writing poems to escape the environment that I was in. And then I found out in my expression that I was good. <laughs> 
And uh, so it led me to write about just what I was going through, the pain that I was going through. And then as I got older, I started writing about relationships. And for Gracefully Broken, it's about, uh, this year I'm, I'm just being really transparent and talking about my journey from my childhood all the way to my adulthood and some of the trauma I experienced and those things that led me to suicide. Uh, it, it's about suicide. And uh, I wanted to, I guess I'm not gonna tell it all. I'm sure you have other questions, but that's what was led me to be an author. I wanted to be transparent. I wanted to be real. I wanted to reach other young ladies that may be going through the same things that I went through, abortion. I, it's a lot of things that I went through. So I wanted to express that. And so I have in four different books. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, can you tell us what was your first book? What was your very first book? My very first book is called The Art of Forgiving. And that was after a very traumatic divorce. And I, of course, you know, through the divorce, you've got so many things that you're experiencing emotionally, uh, even with your children. So I had to find a platform where I could express and let go. First of all, let go of all the pain that I was experiencing at the time due to divorce. And it was my therapy session, actually. The Art of Forgiving was just my therapy session to get over what I was going through in that marriage and to let it go so that I could move on to, uh, you know, the next phase of my life because I was harboring a lot of resentment towards uh, my first husband. And um, I've been married twice, but I was harboring a lot of resentment toward him. And in order for me to get free, and I started writing about how I felt, what I was going through, and it allowed me to have a wonderful book, wonderful. So that was my first book, The Art of Forgiving. Wow. Yeah, I know that um, forgiveness can be hard, um, especially when there's heartbreak and there's a divorce. Um, I'm, I've been divorced before. I understand that. Yeah. I've also dealt with uh, abuse as a, as a child. Um, so I understand. And all those things come together. It's like, yeah. the, you know, they, they, they kind of stream together and you start learning things about yourself as you go into your relationships because you still have that childhood trauma. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes we take it into our marriages and we don't know why until unfortunately the marriage is over. <laughs> Not saying that your that's your experience, but it was, and I had to work on me. the 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 second book was "Know Your Worth: Overcoming the Dragon of Low Self Esteem," and that was me working on me because I realized I when I met you. Yeah, after that book. <laughs> yes, I had to work on me because I realized I, the common denominator in everything I was going through was me, and so there were some issues that I hadn't dealt with from my childhood took that into my adulthood and I was just dragging baggage. So that second book uh, allowed me to free myself and to find myself, so. Awesome, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Can you tell us briefly about the other authors of the book? Cause, Cause since it's a collection, we wanna acknowledge them too. Yeah, okay, so Gracefully Broken is an anthology and it is uh, uh, four wonderful ladies who talk about how they, move from tri trauma to triumph. And it covers uh, cancer. One of the authors, Karen Spears, she is actually the main author and she kind of brought us all into her space. This was her first book and she allowed us to share that mm -hmm. journey with her. And so she wrote about uh, cancer. Maxine writes about divorce and how she overcame divorce and just the trauma she experienced. And then um, Miss um, Shari writes about sexual assault. So all of these are traumas that we wrote about. And then I about suicide and how 800,000 people uh, attempt suicide or no, actually die because of suicide every year. So we all tell our stories, how we moved from the trauma to the triumph. 
because we didn't want to just stay in that vein. And so that's why it's called gracefully broken and how we evolved from where we were from the trauma. So it's an awesome experience to even uh, to co-author with those ladies because each story is powerful. And, and the reviews that we have gotten, they were like, oh my God, I couldn't put it down because each story, I found myself in each one of them. So. Wow. That is, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so are you working on anything else right now? Um, the other hat that I, I'm, I, I didn't say this in the beginning, but I'm a woman that wear many hats. I have my own nonprofit. Uh, I'm a domestic violence advocate. Uh, I am, a, uh, I think, Above all, the, the author part of me is secondary. I'm a playwright. That's what I do primarily. I'm a playwright. And so I am working on a play. Um, and, and, you know, I'm working on a play, but this Saturday I'm doing a, a showcase for playwrights because I got my hands in anything and everything because I want playwrights African-American playwrights, especially in our community to be recognized. So we're doing our first BIPOC uh, uh, playwright festival starting this Saturday, actually. Wow. And so that's what I'm working on now. And then I'm working on a play about abortion. And that play is gonna be powerful because we got, I, I got different stories that I'm telling from different perspectives and also the important thing about that is telling it from the man perspective, because a lot of times we leave that part out. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That would be, be a nice twist to it. Yes, I like it. I love it. I love it. Okay, Miss um, Valerie, tell us about your book, Miss Valerie, or your books. <laughs> so my first book actually was an autobiography that I never published because... Um, my family members were alive <laughs> and I chickened out and I really didn't intend to write an autobiography. I, I really intended to try to cleanse some things from me. But years later, because I had promised God that I was going to publish this book, my first book was um, The Book Club. And The Book Club is about these eight African-American women who you kind of go through, the, the center character goes through some domestic violence. But, you know, I, I really, I, I tell the story of how I wrote that book when I was in Boston and I was missing my friends because I was a part of a book club. And so I was kind of playing around. And when I got back home, my sister read a couple chapters and said, this is a book and you need to finish it. And she kind of forced me to finish it. But as I look back over the, the book, um, one and two, it really is really pieces of women who I have known in my life. So it's about women who present well, like we often do, but have these masks on. But what happens in the book is that the masks become uncovered because their secrets are becoming unveiled, but they kind of pull on each other to get through it. And there's a piece of me in all of the characters um, and also people that I know. So um, I wrote the book club and then the next year I wrote the book club, Carol's Return, the book club too. Um, Carol is uh, sort of the main character that's in this domestic violence situation and she gets almost killed by her younger drug dealing boyfriend mm -hmm. and all of her friends in the book club, the ladies thought they were coming together to have you know, to read some books and drink some wine. But what they found out is that they really came together to see each other through some things. So in two, you see more of a backstory into who the women really are. And as you ladies are talking, there's so many women that, there's a woman that is a sex addict, but you find out she's a sex addict because she watched her twin sister Molest, be molested by their uncle and threw herself off of a bridge because of it. You mm -hmm. find a mother who is overprotective of her son, but then you find out it's because she saw her fiance get killed in a drive-by as he was getting ready to propose to her. So there's so, and then you have the narrator Jasmine, who is really my character, who is always trying to make everything nice for everyone while she got some issues at home. 
that's significant. So um, last year I did a web series because I initially I had never done a web series before, but I really wanted the book to be visual because as I was, you know, kind of going through, I found that a lot of people weren't reading books. So I was like, well, I need something visual so that people can kind of relate to the book. And when I did the, um, the Ladies of the Book Club Part 1 and the Ladies of the Book Club Part 2, which is on YouTube, um, people were like, oh, when is 3 and 4 coming out? And that was really good. And it was just such a blessing that, that I was able to bring people together and do this web series. So nice. that's me. And then I just wrote another book, uh, which is an anthology called um, The Corona Chronicles, which is with 15 authors and really their journey and kind of coping um, mechanisms getting through this pandemic. Very nice. Now, I, I want to talk about that now because we're still in the pandemic. So when did you, yeah. <laughs> when did you um, write this book? And can you share a little bit about how the COVID-19 has been for you? So, so when COVID, I suffer from depression. So when COVID first happened, I was numb for probably about two weeks. I didn't, I just would sit in the middle of my bed and look crazy because I was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have this spiritual relationship with God where every morning I wake up, we have these conversations. So for about two weeks, I was sitting there going, you see what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but then on the second week, he was like, I gave you a gift. I want you to write about it. He told me specifically, I want you to find 15 other writers and I want you to have them each write a chapter and I want you to write the book. And I wrote the book and published it probably in like two months because I put out a call, people just came forward. Um, my grand, well, my three of my grandchildren wrote poems for the book. My daughter wrote mm -hmm. other people. The stories are very different, but they're so powerful. There's a story that um, a chaplain writes about the lesson that she learned from the dying. We have a young lady that I never met before, but she wanted to be a part of the anthology. And I find out that she's homeless the whole time that she's involved in this writing project. Oh, wow. And we have um, a pastor and his wife. Well, the, pa the first lady talks from her perspective of being a pastor's wife and going through this. And so it was therapy for me. It was first something that God asked me to do. And then it was therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as how I'm doing with COVID, I don't think that I have 100%. It, I've clicked back to who I was prior to this pandemic. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm really doing a whole lot of self-reflection. I understand that. I understand that. Yes, Corona has been um, very hard for everybody and I'm sure everybody on here can agree. Um, and the fact that now we have we have the pandemic, but then we have this, this big decision to make. Are we gonna take this vaccine? So we have this pandemic that a lot of us are scared of or you know are fearful of, and we might've lost family and friends too, but then now we're like, okay, are we gonna get this vaccine or not? That seems to be a, an epidemic. <laughs> Because a lot of people don't trust it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm on the fence myself. I haven't gotten it yet. But the only reason why I'm considering is that one, I'm an essential worker and I work with children and family. So that's one reason. And then two is because I have a baby on the way in May. So I'm thinking of her oh, safety. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. So I'm thinking of her safety and I'm just like, I'm on the fence about getting this vaccine because I'm gonna be honest, I don't really trust it too much. But then I'm thinking if I take the vaccine, I might be able to save my whole home, my whole, you know, everyone in my home. Yeah. So um, definitely, um, definitely something that I think that all of us should read so that we can know that we're not alone. You know, we're not alone. Everybody is dealing with different things. Even people who didn't know that they had any form of anxiety or depression are experiencing anxiety and depression now, whereas before they might not have ever felt it. Um, but so many people are going through so much. So this is um, a great idea that you put this out. And I think it really gives um, a personal 
uh, way for people to connect with other women and other real life people that can share their stories. So thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe. And you can, will... you can order it from my website, www.genword.org, mm -hmm. shameless plug. <laughs> they, yes. Oh, we're, we're going to have a lot of plugs. I promise you, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of plugs. <laughs> and I was just about to say, I can see maybe a, a, the Corona Chronicles part two, because we don't know how long we're going to be in this, you know, we really don't. We really don't. Miss Lanice. Hello, lady. Hi. Yes. <laughs> so why did I write? Yes. So um, seven day journey. So yes, that is my first solo project book. I um, first started, I wrote a few um, collaboration books. Um, so my first book that I wrote um, was a collaboration book called Tying the Knot Between the Ministry and the Marketplace. And then I also did a collaboration book called Just Say Yes. And then recently I did a collaboration book called When the Soul, Soul Cries. And now that is my first solo book right now that we're talking about um, the, the seven day journey to discovering and living your purpose. And so um, when it came to that one, the why, um, I really felt led to write, write that book. And um, the thing about it is, it was um, not like that day I woke up and said, oh, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> um, it was actually put on my heart about four um, years prior to write, to write the book. And um, originally, it was just called God's Vision, My Hands. And so um, I had the, the title, um, like I said, four years prior. And originally I had some stuff written out four years prior. And when the time came, there was definitely a shift in how, um, how it was going to be delivered. The opportunity came up for me to go through a 90 day um, writing program through help um, and help someone else. Um, uh, something called um, Author Lab here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but it's, you know, you can live anywhere and go through it because it's a, it was virtually offered as well. So it was really, really great because I needed structure because <laughs> I need timelines and things that kind of helps me um, to, to kind of hold myself accountable too. And so that was very, very helpful to um, definitely finishing the project. Because again, four years ago, I was going to do this. So um, I'm just encouraging anybody that may be listening who has something on their heart that delay does not mean denied. You can still do it, right? And um, you can still come forth with that book that is on your heart to write. And so um, that's kind of why, why I wrote it because I felt like God, I'm a woman of faith. I felt like God wanted me to write it. And so um, as, as I wrote it, it, the seven days came later mm -hmm. and actually it came after there's a process where you actually like kind of pay for the, the title and everything to be done. And I had already did that. And later I wanted to add the seven days to it. So I went back in and changed that <laughs> because, um, with the world that we live in, a lot of times, um, when you add days to it, I felt like people can, ha people have seven days. Like that doesn't seem long. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, the, the whole, the whole thing about it is it, because this is a book for um, people, actually, you don't have to be a person of faith to read the book, but it's, it's, it's from that vein. If, if God um, created the world in, in seven days, roll six, rested on the seven, why couldn't he tell you what your purpose is in seven days? Mm -hmm. So that is the whole, you know, thing of seven days. And so each day there is a process of what you would do to hear the voice of God for you to hear what it is that he would have on his heart for you. 
and in the book, I, I share my own process and some things um, that, that I, I share personal stories too. And then there is um, like actual activation that you go through and prayers and things of that nature. So it's a mix of a devotional as well. So that's a little bit about the book. Very nice. And I was going to say, and I was going to ask you why seven days, but you went on and answered it for me. You went on and answered that for me. You and seven that. is a very, very powerful number. And um, so there's so much. I mean, if you kind of look, if look into seven, you know, even the, the rainbow has seven colors. Seven is just really a powerful number too. So, you know, seven is a number of completion, things of that, that, that. And seven is so powerful because even when you think about seven, like he created the world in six days, but on the seventh day he rests. So yeah. even when it comes, we have to understand the importance of rest when it even comes to understanding in everything that we do. Sometimes we want to go, 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 and we forget the importance of we have to also rest in everything that we do. So yeah. ladies that are listening to me, you power, you superwoman, rest. <laughs> Include that in everything that you do, because sometimes we forget how important that is to our regiment. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, something that I, I think I, I preach more nowadays than I used to is self-care. Self-care is so important. Getting that rest is important. Um, self-care is so important because um, you can lose yourself. You can lose yourself with daily life, with working, being a mother, being a wife, being an advocate, being a business owner, an author. <laughs> we, we have so many hats that we are wearing and we really have to listen to our bodies and listen to our, our hearts and our minds to know when we really just need to rest and take time out for ourselves to, to really just um, feed into ourselves. You can't, you can't serve others if you're not feeding into yourself if you're not investing in yourself. So um, I definitely, definitely appreciate you bringing that point out about the rest on that seventh day, because it, it is, it's really important. It's really for important for all of us to take time for self-care. It's yeah. very important. <laughs> I'm going to speak from a personal standpoint um, that it's, it's important because you, you can lose yourself and you can get caught up in, in everyday life, especially with this pandemic going on. Yeah. We have our kids at home. We're working full time. We're teaching now. We're teachers, yeah. nurses, mothers, and, and working 24 hours a day now. Actually, with the pandemic, I think it's even more important because sometimes people might even thought like, well, you have more time. Actually, the the amount of stress and, and the yeah. different things that came on with the pandemic, even with a lot of the children, they did so many studies on the children that have gone through depression and things of that nature with this pandemic. Rest is so important um, to really? definitely take advantage of and include that in your, like I said, self-care as well it really mm -hmm. is it really is that's a very good point that's a very mm -hmm. good point our children everybody's suffering right now even mm -hmm. even the the healthiest of persons mentally have have still suffered in some way shape or form through this yeah. pandemic definitely mm -hmm. mr design i i saved you for last <laughs> tell us about you mr design there's a lot to tell uh, well i don't know about all that but <laughs> Well, actually, well, first, it's, it's just, I mean, I got to do this. So I just want to thank everyone <clears throat> for, you know, for, for what you're writing about and for what you're doing and for telling the stories and how significant and important that is. Um, you know, we started off with Tiffany talking about this month and um, as, as a way of kicking this off. And so I just got to acknowledge that I've been uh, and an advocate and educator for about 20 years around um, sexual assault, domestic violence, and apartment violence. So um, I got started working specifically with young men and have been, you know, working, uh, working around that, using the arts both as a way of raising awareness, but as a point of healing since ever since. So I just want to, I had to hold a moment um, for that and acknowledge that and just thank you for, for all that y'all are doing. So I just want to start you. there. Um, just got to do that beforehand. <laughs> that conversation puts me in a different mindset. So I want to make sure to acknowledge that and, um, and thank y'all. Um, and for me, I mean, the, the first part in terms of the question that you asked, that's actually for me really straightforward is that 
Um, there's an author, a poet, and a publisher named Jessica Care Moore. Um, and she came, she was in North Carolina, had been a couple of times, but on this particular occasion, she was talking to everyone and she talked about t the necessity for folks to tell their own stories, uh, to tell the stories they were carrying um, so that they would not be lost. The importance of making sure that we wrote books um, because we needed others who looked like us to know that they could too. And also she spoke um, about being able to leave that legacy behind. And there were just a number of us who were just struck by that. Um, coming from a performing arts background and a you know, spoken word and hip hop background at that point in time, most of us thought about um, capturing our art in ways specifically to sell as we were doing performances. So we thought of it more like merch and less like this tangible artifact. And she was the first person to kind of challenge us, challenge us on that. By then she had started a press in Atlanta called um, and had been starting to publish young authors. So that was, that was the catalyst for me was having someone to say, what does it really mean for you to think about this? what are you leaving behind and how you're doing that? And um, I, I, that stuck with me. And then I got a chance to start, I started, I got a chance to do a residency at St. Augustine's University, which is my undergraduate alma mater. And being on campus with these just brilliantly bright young black folks, um, these, these young folks, and wanting to help them recognize their creativity, you know, regardless of what they were majoring in, just to have an outlet. And um, I started with a campus literary magazine. And then, you know, students who really stood out started to talk about, you know, wanting to write a book. And I remember what Jessica Care Moore said. And so I had this moment of, well, let me figure out how this all works so that I can help you. And actually, um, that was what made me actually put put out my very first book was it was a trial run um to see how the process went for me to learn everything from you know not only writing the book but laying it out typesetting cover like what was the process so that i could help provide that opportunity for my students so it wasn't honestly it wasn't even till my second book that i wrote a book for me <laughs> um the whole thing was just about you know what does it mean to be able to help folks, you know, leave these stories behind. And if I can do that for, for my for my students, then, you know, what what they'll leave from the they'll leave from Raleigh with this. So um, that's what it was. And since then, um, it's just about what stories and what things do I need to tell. You know, my second book was more intentional. And um, the last two have been even more so in terms of who am I as an artist and what do I need to say and how do I want to say it and what do I want to, what do I want to share with the world? Very nice. So tell us the, the, the titles of your first book. So the first book is called The Innovator. Um, you know, that, that, that's, that's my trial and error book. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the, the second one is called Freedom Papers. And, and that's, that was this journey of being intentional about the art that I share. Um, and then the last two books have been about Black life. And so um, in 2016, I released um, Everything We're Fighting For, an exploration of being Black in America. And then this latest book, which is, was, was something that I've been really waiting to do, was specifically about Black life in the South. And so that's, that's Shackled Freedom. Wow. Wow. So I'm a Northern girl. Tell us about life in the South, because I have no idea. <laughs> Tell us, so tell us about your last book. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's, you know, there's, there's a couple of intentional things. One is, you know, I have this belief that, that we are, that things are narrowed uh, intentionally um, and that we're seeing that all over. Um, everything's being simplified. We're, we've been in this microwave society, but that it has an, an impact on us that it's easier to manipulate perception, perspectives, and position when things are narrowed. When things are nuanced and complex and, 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 you know, and really, really rich, it's harder. You know, you've got to wrestle with all of what something is and all of who a person is. 
And so being black and in the South, that's something that I've, I feel like, you know, it, it's ever present because this is so much down here. There's so much, it's rich, it's full, it's vibrant, um, it's difficult, but even the, even the difficulty has nuance. And because of the role that the South has in this country, that's not often taken into consideration. It's stigmatized. Um, there's a lot of shun, there's a lot of step, you know, there's, there's just a lot that goes, that happens when thinking about the South. And it also happens to be the place where most black folks in the country are. So that carries a lot. Um, it has, it means that there's so much history and tradition and, you know, music, arts, the Chitlin circuit, you know, jazz, you know, rock and roll, like there's so much richness, um, but that, you know, but then it's also the South. And so you've got to, what do you, what do you do with those two things at one time? All of the richness and all the contributions, but also the legacy of all of the hurt and trauma and everything that happens with the South. So the intention of the book is to talk about my experience in the South wholly. You know, what does it mean to be Southern? What does it mean to be in the country and the city? What does it mean to love? What does it mean to have these, you know, these wonderful family matriarchs that I grew up around? Uh, what does it mean to deal with racism and oppression? What does it also mean to, to, be, to, to be a part of a legacy of, you know, of civil rights and, 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 and movement building? And so what does all of that mean? Um, and so that's, those are the kind of things that the book uh, deals with. Yes, that, those, that's some, some very like deep conversations. That's some deep conversations. Um, for you, what is, I guess maybe if you can share with us, what has been a, a very, what is an experience that you have as a black man in the South experience that left a impression on your life that you can share with us or maybe shaped you to the man that you are? Um, the biggest thing, I mean, honestly, the thing that I'll talk about the most is leaving the South. You know, I came from a working class family, so I was a you know, I was a college student before I ever really, really left the South, you know, um, and, and, and art took me across the country. So I'm, you know, for the first time, um, but, you know, being, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm black, I'm six foot seven, like there's just these things <laughs> that like, you know, I can't avoid being noticed, but then you, you know, folks hear you and, you know, first time they hear that twang and, you know, people's viewpoints and everything start to shift. Um, you know, it's, you know, there's the, there's the, or did you play basketball? And there's that conversation. And then, you know, you start to talk more and it's like, you sound smart. And there's these, you know, there's this thing, oh, you're an artist. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, just having the, just having, depending on where I am in the country, having these really distinct experiences about being black Mm -hmm. and intelligent and artistic and from the South, um, really just kind of raised my eyes and raised my awareness uh, and kind of, you know, sent me back home to kind of dig in and study and just kind of, and just sit with my people and have those conversations about, because I never expected those experiences. I was all right. bright-eyed and full of wonder and, um, and just had to kind of, you know, think about how I wanted to continue to represent myself and show up and so that really shaped me both as an artist and a man very nice thank you thank you for sharing that um so i'm going to ask you this and we're going to work backwards Desan, what are you working on right now what can we look look forward to in the near future with you uh so there's um of course in addition to continuing to promote the book there's two things uh coming up um one is a series um, of performance videos um, that are going to drop start once a week, starting for ten weeks, starting um, April twentieth, called Sneakers and Stanzas. So they'll be on my YouTube page, which is under my name, Dasana Hanu. Um, and so, um, ten poems that you know, classic poems that I'm known for, and I'm also very big into sneakers. And so, <laughs> there's um, so you know, bringing those together, I work with a wonderful videographer to put this series together. But it was just a way for me to present some of these poems that that have just, you know, that have been really rich, really good and rich for me. And then I'm in the middle, um, now we're moving into development. Um, you know, I'm also 
I'm also a playwright and co-founder and managing director of a, of a black theater company um, in Durham, North Carolina called Black Poetry Theater. And um, I'm finishing up a new production um, that will premiere in spring 22. Um, but we're, work, we're now moving into development. We'll do a stage reading late spring, I mean, late summer. Um, and so um, it's really been good. I was able to to um, get funding from the National Performance Network through a partnership with the Hayti Heritage Center to develop this piece, and so that's the other big thing that I'm that I'm working on. I love it. I love it. Um, I one thing that I love about what you're you're doing is you're speaking a lot of positive things in the universe. So we're talking about you know growing up as a black man in the South, you know. Um, talking about your poetry, helping to use, um, leave a legacy behind them. When you write a book and it's published, that, that, that there's your legacy. You're putting your story in a book. And I love, I love that you are teaching our youth how to put their lives on paper and how to write. Um, I know one thing for me growing up and dealing with the different things that was going on in my household and my childhood, I started writing poetry and I started writing journals because that was a way of healing for me. And that was a form of therapy for me. And I see a couple of, of our authors, um, you know, nodding their head in agreement. Yeah. So it's really, really good therapy, especially for our, our inner city youth or our youth who might be living in an environment um, that they're dealing with a lot of stress or a lot of poverty or a lot of crime or just, just anything. Um, writing can be so therapeutic on so many different levels. And so putting your story in writing, pen, you can't erase it, you can't throw it away. It's something that people can read after, after, you, after you're gone. I think that is an excellent, excellent um, legacy for you that you're being able to teach youths to be able to put their story on paper. Um, so I want to commend you on that. And I think that that's something that um, us as authors should definitely um, do as well. We should talk to our, our youths and we should talk to our community about, you know, putting your stories down. They used to do it back when our, our great, great grandparents lived. They wrote it down so that we can know what our, the journey was as, as African-Americans. And that's something that has, has been lost. I think in as families, it's been lost. And so um, I definitely appreciate you teaching youth how to write down their stories and the importance of you know putting putting your story on 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 paper. Everyone has a story to tell. All of us have stories to tell. Um, so I think that, that is that's just phenomenal. Um, where can we find your books, um, Desan? Uh You can. Amazon or anywhere you can find a book online or you can order them directly from me. It's uh, dasanahanustore.com mm -hmm. uh, and you can find those there. Very nice, very nice. Um, Miss Lenise, Miss Lenise, what can we look forward to in the near future from you? Yes, um, well, definitely. I just recently did um, my first TED Talk, so you definitely want to check that out. Um, <laughs> um, called Re, um, Reclaim Your um, Worth by Sharing Your Voice. So if you just look me it. up, Lanice McGee, you can find me on any platform and on my books and everything that way too. Everything Lanice Leads that's how you can find me or Lenise McGee is my name, but I go by Lenise Leeds. Um, and so you can find me on all social media platforms that way. Um, but some projects that I have coming up, I do a lot of um, speaking, motivational speaking, things of that nature. So I have um, a lot of events coming up. Um, so if you just follow me at Lenise Leeds, you will see my um, upcoming events. Um, I also work with youth. I have an um, a, um, organization, Future Entrepreneurs Moving Ahead. So I will be working with the youth. I do an annual event where we um, work with them, help them become entrepreneurs, and then they um, showcase their businesses that they, they come up with at the end of the six-week program. So they will be doing that. Um, also, I am the co-founder of an organization called Big, Beautiful, and Blessed, 
Yes, that's that's it right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big, beautiful, and blessed. So we definitely towards um, probably around. Well, if you follow me, Lenise Lee, you'll find out that too when we post. But we will be recruiting for that. So we promote positive self image and plus size models. So those are some things that we will be doing. <laughs> I am um, and I want. I always am kind of an author by default. Um, so. But um, my first passion is really um, promoting and um, I have a love for, you know, just women really and, and, and youth. That is my first love and my first passion is really um, empowering women and definitely young ladies. And so that's where my heart lies and um, where you will mostly find me doing stuff that is around that type of work. Very nice. Well, it seems like there's some collaborations working right now here on this uh, author showcase. (laughs) You saw that I got excited when you said about body positivity, um, because I have a I have a lingerie line and we talk about body positivity Mm -hmm. and embracing your bodies and being comfortable in your own skin, regardless of your size. Um, We are definitely in a, a movement where plus size is not a bad thing anymore. Anymore. And just because you're plus size doesn't mean that you're unhealthy. Um, right. so I, yes. Just because I'm a thick girl don't mean that I'm going to die tomorrow. <laughs> so I really, I love it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's true. There has to be a lot of education because some people don't know, like, there's people who are plus size that have no health condition. They, I mean, they don't have diabetes. They don't have, there's nothing like, <laughs> medically wrong seriously and there's yeah. people who are thin that have health conditions so there's it's more about education but one quote that I always say is that you have to love the woman you are as you are becoming the woman you're yet to become because yeah. it doesn't matter if you're skinny if you're big wh- whatever that is if you do not love where you're at right now whenever you become whatever that vision is you're going to still find something mm-hmm. that you are not yet so yeah. just yeah. just love the you you are and so um that's what you know i'm all about like really just promoting um that perception of I loving love ourselves mm-hmm. i love it i love it well yes we we need to talk so i can put yes. some ladies in some lingerie and um they can show <laughs> off them, them them thick thighs <laughs> <laughs> very nice very nice I love it I love it Miss Valerie what can we look forward to with you so um you know words are so very powerful and I am going to be really working more with my family with generational words so one of the things that as you guys were talking about the youth is because my my family calls ourselves we call ourselves expression artists and it gives I have seven grandchildren who it gives them permission to be who they are. So they play musical instruments. My my nine-year-old granddaughter writes, she writes movies and films and sings. And then I have two twin grandchildren that um, like it's nothing for them. We're gonna get ready to put together a short film and we're gonna do this and they edit like they're 10. But because it's so natural for us, because our family is so creative, it gives them permission. So I think I wanted to say that I think it's really important that we share our creativity with youth. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working on a project with a young lady by the name of Maisha L. Gilliam. And she had a near death experience. She suffers from cardiomyopathy And after she had um, one of her children, her heart stopped for 10 minutes. But it's a very powerful story. Um, And she, she, we were honored because she came to us and asked if we could help her put it on film. So we're, um, generational words, my daughters and I are, uh, we've written the script for her and we're in the process of, um, we cast it last week and we should be shooting in June. So that's a really powerful project. I believe that God is all over it. I know God is all over it. Um, So look forward to that. I also do motivational speaking. Hit me up if you're interested. I'm always doing Facebook lives. I'm all about advocacy and empowering our people because, and we really, for real, the people on this platform right now, we really should 
get together because I don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a reason why we are all on here. And so I think there's some things that we need to do. We share so many similarities yes. in our passion and our stories. I just think there's opportunity here um, for us to get together. Um, I'm also, I work also do Legal Shield um, and some financial counseling. And I'm working on probably at the end of the summer, the web series part three and four of the book club. So just really, just, just you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like we're in a time right now like we've never been in before. Um, and as people of color, we have to really lift each other up and help each other and empower each other as much as possible, whenever possible, because that is the only way we are going to move forward, I believe, as a people. And I think we all do that in some shape, form, or fashion. Yes, I agree with you. Um, one thing I've learned doing these showcases is finding out how ever, all of the authors have something in common. Um, and I, I don't know if you've been seeing me writing, but I've been writing down your show ideas based on the things that y'all are talking about and you know having y'all come back on you know with me to talk about specific things because all of us and all of you have talked about some very specific things some very strong topics um so I totally agree with you there's so many there's so much opportunities here and beyond where we can all work together to make such a big difference and a big impact in the community. Um, all of us that sound like we love working with kids. Um, we all have survivor stories. Um, everyone on here is passionate. Um, we have a couple of playwrights, some some oh. some uh, some, actors, makers. some actresses, yeah. some models. <laughs> We've got a whole lot going on right here. Um, so I, I I am loving this. I am loving this, and because I was I was thinking. Because I only knew Miss Vicky, I was thinking, how is this going to go? How are we all going to mesh this together? But we're doing we're doing that without even um, without even trying because we all have similar goals, similar passions, um, and similar purposes to what it is that we are doing in the community right now. So I am I'm just enjoying this, and I'm smiling from ear to ear because I see so many opportunities for for collaborations here and that I'm just very, very excited. <laughs> um, so as an author, what has been the hardest thing for you? Or Well, first, let me ask this question. Are all of you self-published or do you have a publisher that is backing your book? Let me ask that question first. I'm self-published. Okay. So. You're self-published as well, Miss Lenise? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm self-published as well. Um, so as an author for Miss Lenise and Miss Valerie, what has been the hardest for you as an author, as a self-published author? What's been the, the hardest obstacle for you to have to deal with as an author? And I think it's important to ask this question because we have a lot of people who are interested in writing their stories. Mm -hmm. I would say when I first started, it was not having um, information about how to publish, which is one of the reasons why I self-published. And then, you know, really look, as I did research agencies charging thousands of dollars for things that I could do myself, people not wanting to share um, anything with you. And so it was really sort of a, a, a learn as you go. And then the marketing piece of it, um, I really got involved in networking and again, one of the reasons why I did the web series is because of marketing. My daughter had done a short film with the 48 hour film festival. So it exposed me to a lot of things. But um, the other piece of it is that when I, I was discouraged when I first wrote my first book, because I guess I expected that all of my friends and family, like if everybody I knew bought a copy of my book, it would change my life, but they did not. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Can you buy a copy? No, yeah. they didn't do that. So I was like, well, well, how does that work? So it was really understanding that this is this is like my baby. Um, I had to grind it out. I couldn't expect people to support me. I had to learn and I'm I'm continuously learning as I'm going going along. Um, 
that that's was the lesson, but it also encouraged me that there's nothing that we really can't do. I, I have to say that. I had no money when I did this web series, nothing. I was like, I don't know, God, would you, because God be, you know, he got jokes sometimes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so-and-so. He don't give you no provision. I ain't supposed to do that. God, oh, just go ahead, and I'll help you. <laughs> but he brought together, I'm telling you, I had a cast that was out of this world. He provided the videographer, everything that I needed. I shot everything in my house was there. So I guess my encouragement to everyone out there is that do not um, let fear or feel like you don't have provision stop you from doing anything. There is nothing that you can't do if you don't try. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned through this because you could not tell me five years ago that I had, I would have written one book. And I have another anthology that I didn't even talk about. And then I have another one that's going to hit you. I would never have thought that. Like, I would always go into, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. But we can. We can do whatever we put our minds to. That's true. That's true. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, I've, I found, too, that even though people might have said, oh, you wrote a book. Not all of them are going to buy it. <laughs> so, and not all of them are going to support you, share your posts, so forth and so on. And that's okay, because not everything is for everybody. Um, so I learned that as well. But I also learned that um, if you said that it was, you wrote your book, or was it Miss Lenise? One of you said that you had written a book four years before. Was that Miss Lenise? Yeah, that was me. I, um, yeah. The idea was four years prior before I actually did it. So, right. Sometimes it doesn't happen. It's not birth when it actually comes, you know, when it comes to mind. So to keep pushing. Okay. And in my situation, I actually went through, uh, like I said, I went through a 90 day program. So they kind of help with the process, but it was still, it's still considered self-published because I have all the rights and things of that nature. But my biggest struggle um, is similar. It's the marketing at, at the end. Cause now you, now you have a book. Now what, what are you going to do? How are you going to keep pushing it? And then how are you going to keep putting it out there? And then you'll have different remarks like, oh, we tired of hearing about your book or whatever. <laughs> but you have to keep pushing it out there because if you're not going to do it, who else will? And then you'll find later that some people will say they support you and they, they won't and you can't take that personal. And then some people will support you later mm -hmm. that, oh, because you put it out there now, you have to remind people will forget. And you have to, people have live, they have live things are going on and people who you never thought would support you will. And you cannot rely on just your circle of people supporting you. There are, I, I really believe there, there is somebody waiting to hear what you have to say. And it's not just the people in your circle. There is somebody that needs to hear what you have to say. And it's not just the people that you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and back to what really do not allow the fear. I say, don't allow the fear of failure to forfeit your future. Mm -hmm. Do not allow that because it will definitely do that. So just put it out there because again, somebody else's yes is tied to your yes so just put it out there and again the struggle is not is it's real like they say it's, it's real but there are people just as many people who say no and don't want to help you there are people who will yes there's, yes. there's some out there that will you have yeah, to start I you. I and i want to say them. I want to say that I'm one of those people. I've always been a trailblazer, so I did mine differently. I, I self-published my own, the first book in 2005, but I decided to start my own publishing company so that I could help other authors get published. So I've, I've published um, nine authors uh, already, and Gracefully Broken, I published that book as well. Um, but I decided decided that uh, last year I was like I'm not doing this anymore because I have my hands in too many things and, and sometimes you have to narrow it down I'm for real I'm a playwright for real that is my love uh, directing all of that but um, I also love to write and so I started my own publishing company so that I could help other people. But now I dissolved that because I'm like, I got too much to do. I got, <laughs> got my hands in too many things. And so, um, so I, I did find it a little differently, but I still kind of, I, I guess that still falls in self-publishing as well. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I did the same thing. I took all of the research, um, all of the articles, all the little templates, everything that I learned, I put it in a notebook and I just put it out there. If you need help, let me know, let me help you. So I'm actually working with two, two authors right now myself. Um, I think it's, it's really important for us to share the knowledge. And, and, I, and one thing that I have learned, and, and I know people might start yelling at me, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be honest that in our community, we don't like to share information if we think it's gonna get the next person ahead. Um, and I think that's, that's such a disservice to our community. If you know how to do it, share it with somebody else. Publishing is not easy. Self-publishing is definitely not easy, but actually putting your story on paper and wanting to publish it and share it with someone else, that is a big accomplishment in itself, whether you sell one book or a thousand books. So um, one thing I, I truly, truly believe that us authors, we have to support each other. We really do have to support each other because we're, we, we and this might be a big community, but it's also a small community as well. Um, to, to share the information, to share the knowledge, to share the network um, is something that can benefit not just yourself, but the person that you share it with. So um, I did the same thing, Miss Vicki. I started um, helping some other authors with, with their projects. Um, and it's really, it's really been a great experience. And it's also helped me to build on marketing myself. Um, so yes, thanks for sharing that. What was your big obstacle, Miss Vicki, oh, as an author? I just... I think that the love of writing always kept me centered. You know, um, I, yes, marketing is, 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 is a challenge. All of that is a challenge, but I always felt this way. It's all about the, the writing for me, the love of the writing. And sometimes it was disappointing because, you know, people didn't buy your books or people wasn't excited about what you were doing as you were. And that was disappointing at times, but then I got to a place when I said, this is all, I know it sounds selfish, but this is all about me. This yes. is all about okay. me. <laughs> and so uh, the other stuff didn't matter to me, okay? It's all about my voice being heard and all about telling somebody else, well, helping somebody else to find the voice. And so after a while, it just didn't matter for, to me, you know, mm -hmm. and like I said, I have my hands in so many different things that it's all fulfilling for me because when I leave this earth, I want to know that I did everything that I wanted to do that was important to me and that I will not have any regrets in that area. So, you know, yes, I don't know. I mean, hey, it may not make a whole lot of money at certain <laughs> points. But I feel so fulfilled, even at this age, at this de decade, because I feel like this, the only thing that I haven't done that I want to do, well, two things, I want to get married again. And <laughs> then the other thing is I want to go to Broadway. Those are the only two things left for me to accomplish that is on my bucket list. Everything else is secondary for me. Yes, and I'm sorry, but I think we have a Broadway cast right here on this showcase <laughs> tonight. We definitely do. We definitely do. Um, Mr. Design, tell us what has been the bi biggest obstacle for you as an author? Um, well, I think the, I mean, there's just, there's just always, there's always things to learn. It's, it's an, it's, you know, it's an intricate industry and, you know, whether you're self-publishing or, you know, whether, whether, you know, querying publishers, querying agents. I mean, there's just a lot to learn. And there's a lot of gatekeeping um, that happens. And I've heard a lot of horror stories and, and you know, the veil has been pulled back because, you know, you look up the folk, you know how they say never meet your heroes and you look up the folks and you find out things aren't what they are. And, and so it's just, you know, that, that has probably been the biggest thing is just, um, you know, just what sifting through everything and then figuring out, you know, making your decisions about how you want to maneuver yourself um, once you're able to do that. And for me, um, you know, I've felt really supported. Like when I'm, I'm in a really beautiful community um, and, you know, even like tonight, like I, I'm continually finding folks that are here that have just been great. And so, you know, I've been lucky to be able to be here in North Carolina and, you know, and sustain, you know, my creativity and my artistry and find 
you know, reasons to, to not stress, but it, it can, it can get overwhelming with everything that you got to sift through. And I think the other thing is that, um, not feeling like you have to do it the way someone tells you, because there's so much advice once people find out you're doing things, especially if it's anything creative. Everybody's curious and everybody's got an opinion. Right. Um, and there's so many people who have, like, I know someone who did, and I'm like, that's beautiful. I really thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's great. I'm glad you're excited. But you have to kind of, dra- you know, drown out that noise and kind of figure out your own way. Right. Uh, And it's important to not to let people box you in, you know, that right there is so important that you have to do it this way. And I remember uh, when I wrote my first play, I had a cast of 16 people and I was told that I would never be able to go on tour with such a large cast. And so I have proved it wrong because we've been to D.C., Tennessee, come on, you know, (laughs) Florida, we've been, you know, all these different places. So you cannot allow people to box you in and tell you what you can't do because this is the standard and this is how it's supposed to be done. Do your thing, you know, just do it your way. (laughs) When Frank Sinatra made that song, he don't know what he was talking. He he don't know how powerful (laughs) that was. I did it my way. I I love it. I love it. Do it your way. That's that's what I'll be saying the rest of the day. Do it your way. (laughs) Um, So we have someone on here, Miss Ella Johnson, who was listening early earlier. And she said, this was while you were talking, Miss Vicky. She said, I need help with film, need to bring my four books to the screen. So I definitely would um, make sure that you go on to the, 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 feed on my page, Miss Vicki, and reach out to Miss Ella Johnson, because I saw her comment that when you were talking about film writing. Um, so please make sure that you reach out to her. Um, I also have Miss Tammy, who said that it's awesome that we are helping the youth and also showing their imagination in a positive way. Um, she said that she had the same experience with writing her first book, everything, everyone is not going to support you, especially those you have supported. So um, that is very true. Miss um, Valerie posted a question in here and we're, t- we're talking of chatting amongst ourselves, but we're gonna put it out there. Where is everybody from? Cause I, Mr. Desan told us that he's a Southern boy. And I just told you that I'm a Northern gal. I'm from Washington, DC. Miss Valerie, where are you from? I'm from New Jersey originally, but I call Virginia my home now. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Miss Vicki, where are you from? Texas. Texas. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> I'm from Sugar Land, Texas, uh, 20 miles from Houston. And that is home for me, even though I haven't lived there I don't, since I was 17. Uh, but uh, I've lived in Virginia and now I reside here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I only <laughs> said I was going to be here for three years, and I've been here for 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, I moved here from Washington, D.C. in um, August 2005. And actually, the reason why I moved down here sooner than I planned was because of the assault that I experienced mm-hmm. that I write about in Reality Check. That happened in July, and by August, I was moving here to North Carolina. Um, sooner than I thought, but my parents moved here a year and a half before me. And then after the assault happened, I, I said, I wanted to be closer to my parents so I can heal with them. So that's what brought me down here to, to the Charlotte area. So I've been here since 2005. Miss Lenise, where are you from? Waukee, Wisconsin. Still here. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Say it one more time. We didn't, Miss Vicki didn't hear you. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. Miss Milwaukee, mm-hmm. Wisconsin. Yeah. Never been there. Never been there at all. <laughs> I've been to Jersey. Cold. Been to Texas. <laughs> and Desan, where are you from? In um in the South? <laughs> where are you from? Well, I'm a North Carolina boy. Um, okay. Okay. In North Carolina, and I'm in Durham now. Yeah, okay. Both sides. Both sides of my family were rooted here in North Carolina. Very nice. Very nice. All right. All right. So um, my next question for everybody and anybody who wants to, to who wants to answer, um, if you had someone that was coming to you that said, you know what, I want to write my book. What's the best advice you're going to give them? They want to write their first book. 
Write it. <laughs> Write it. Do it. Get it That's done. I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. do so it. So many people have stories. Just do it. People put too many rules. Oh, I don't know. And, you know, <laughs> I don't have time to write. I don't, you know, it has to be this way. What should I do? Start with an outline? Just write. <laughs> Just write it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Put it on paper and then go back. And, you know, and people don't understand there are several rewrites anyway. So start the first draft and go from there. You're going to change it who knows how many times, you know, before you get it to that final form. So just do it. Right. I like it. I like it. Any other advice? If someone says, you know what, I want to write my first book. I would say the same thing. I would say do it. I also, I mean, you know yourself. Um, Like for me, it's good. Accountability is important for me. So you know yourself. Is accountability important for you? Do you need someone to check in with you? Then get you accountability, you know, get someone to, to ask you to about it. And again, I think you know yourself. Are you the type of person who is a perfectionist and things like that? If so, then then you need to really take that advice from Vicki. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, just right. It doesn't have to be A, B, C, D, E, F, no, just right. So understanding that it doesn't need to be perfect to go. So just kind of understanding who you are to um, step away from your own thoughts, you know, because sometimes you put yourself in a box and you talk yourself out of it versus telling yourself why you should. Um, I would just say go for it and and it does not perfection is not the the result right now you don't have to to know and and I'm gonna tell you this too some of the things you write are not even going to be in there anyway so (laughs) my my book from four years ago half of the stuff didn't end up in the book but that's okay the book still came it still happened so go ahead write those things out start it yeah. hold yourself accountable, um, do what you need to do and get it done. Um, it's the, the seed is planted in your heart for a reason. Go ahead. This is the water. We're the water right now telling you to go ahead and start letting that, um, book grow. Yes. And yes. not only that too, what, what you need to realize there's two different processes. You're the writer, but there's an editor that can go back and make it look pretty. So yes. a lot of times people get stuck because they're trying to make it look pretty and do all that. You're the writer. There's another person that can edit, make it look right, proofread and do all that. So just yep. write. Yep. Get the first draft done. And I'm going to add to that. Make time to write. Um, I know as, as a busy mom, when I was working on reality check, um, I was a single mom when I started the process of wanting to publish it, um, and then going into being married. So make, making time, I just dedicated, I said every night before I go to bed, I'm going to take 20, 30 minutes to do something with my book. And I think that that really kept me focused and accountable, like Miss Lenny said, to get it done because I knew that I wanted my story to be read and I knew it was a story that needed to be read because I knew that it could help somebody. And so that was my motivation. Um, but I had to make the time to do it because it's it's not an easy process. Um, once you get that first draft done, then you've got to get it looked at, edited, proofread, like Miss Vicky said, you got to get the cover done, you got to get the, the rights done. And, uh, you have so many things to do. Get the first draft done, make make time, put time aside to um, to write that first draft. And once you do that, you're going to be motivated to continue because now you've written it. Now you have it, you have something um, to move forward with. What about you, uh, Mr. Design? What, what would be your advice to someone, first time writer? Well, to, you know, I don't, I don't, no need to repeat all the wisdom that's been given, but the, the, in addition, I think the thing that I would say is the, you need time, you need, you need that time for yourself to reconcile that you're actually writing this thing you've been wanting to write. But once you kind of get through that, then don't, don't do this in silence. Don't do this, you know, because You'd be surprised, and I, I think I think Ms. Valley was talking about this earlier. You'd be surprised the resources that are around you when you 
commit like and own that this is a thing you're doing and you put that out into the universe mm -hmm. uh, you'd be amazingly surprised um because it can look daunting to to go through all the steps but a lot of the things that you need are around you um and and there are times where you've made impressions on people who'd be willing to connect you or help you um but haven't had the, the right thing to to help with and this and that book is it and so um you know have that time but don't hold it so close to the chest for forever there's a moment before it's you know where you need to let people know i know we all have that thing about not wanting to mention it until we we're, we're doing it because we don't want to be the person that, that's always talking about doing something mm -hmm. but there is a point in time where you need to start letting folks know that this is this is real and it'll draw you know it'll draw all kinds of energy to you that's a very good point. That's a very, very, very good point. I like that. I like it. Um, okay. So also I want to just mention too, uh -huh. it's important. I think for some people, um, space is important. Mm -hmm. So um if you if if you want to get into special space to write, that sometimes will create the environment for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so um that may help you with your your you know, your creative thoughts in the process. So um, that could be something that might help. Everybody's kind of different in how they write. So um, just kind of think of different things that may help you, um, but just definitely start. And then keep telling yourself that um, if you are having any doubts, because sometimes that is what will stop you, that your voice deserves um, to be out here and that your legacy, legacy deserves to have its story. I love it. I love it. Um, Miss Lanice, I, I didn't bring this up when we were talking earlier, but I wanted to make mention that when I opened up your book, something fell out. <laughs> and I think it was a an excellent personal touch. So there was a little baggy. Um, and you have on, you have on here and you can see, I don't know if you can, everybody can see it, but it says day one. So if you can just tell us quickly, not only do you get the book, but you get some personal little trinkets too, that I think really, um, impressed me when I received your book. So can you tell us about this? What, what, what else are they getting when they get your book? Yeah. So there's, um, a seven day little, um, cards that go with it to kind of encourage you like at the end of each day you open it and it's like a little personal note from from our father you know saying like just words of encouragement to encourage you to keep going at the end of each day and then there's a little journal you know for you to write notes in there as you are reading whatever comes to your mind as you are writing because of course as you're writing things are going to come to you as you're reading things are going to come to you and then um it's just at the end of the book just a little thank you um a thank you card from me for purchasing the book and then there's a um a bookmark in yes. there Yes, very nice, very nice. So that was one of these these are the things that I saw in the package um, when I got your book and I thought that it was awesome, especially because you're taking them through a process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's reading a novel or a self-help book or something like that, yours is taking someone through a process, seven day journey to discovering your purpose. And so you're giving them the tools to be able to do, do so. And I thought that that was very amazing. And as you can see, and I haven't opened it up yet because I didn't want to open mm -hmm. it up until, but I'm assuming this is the thank you. Yeah. yeah. There's also in there, there's seven videos. If later they're done and they want to go um, back and on YouTube, I've uploaded seven videos that they later can go and watch mm -hmm. later to mm -hmm. kind of just hone in on the points so i love it i love it i love it i love it i thought that was a, a great touch um and something that i wanted to definitely um definitely show um when i was looking at gracefully broken i was looking on the back and how beautiful the back is and how you highlighted all of the authors miss vicky um, but this is just, it's a gorgeous book. 
It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And um, I, wish, I wish I could take credit for all that, but Miss Karen Spears, she was so passionate about her first book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she she made sure that her personal touch was on it and in it. <laughs> but the thing that I'm really, really, just really proud of with Gracefully Broken is just how we merge together as authors. Our stories complement each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, even our pictures, we, we, we both have, we all have powerful features that mm -hmm. kind of stand out and kind of express who we are. And so, I mean, it's girl power all the way. Yes, I it mean, is. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. that are being told, each woman can relate to it. You'll find yourself in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give my website right now, just in case since I'm on the road. It's yep, go ahead, because that, that was going to be the next thing we did. <laughs> it's, my it's my <laughs> name. This is, she already showed you this beautiful I got upside down. It's a beautiful <laughs> book, but it's my website, VickiLEvans.com. And my Vicky is with an I E V I C K I E L E V A N S.com. And it would tell you, I, I'm, it is located on Amazon, but I'm, I'm actually pushing and promoting my website for you to purchase it because I want to autograph it for you. I want to say yeah. something personally to you. So I want you to go on my website to get it so that I can uh -huh. add that personal touch. Just like Sister Lanise, that is a good idea. You want you want the, the your customers to walk away with that personal touch. So I want to autograph it for you. Say something special to you. So get it off of my website. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice. Yes, I think that that's something that all authors should do um, if they're able to, is to sign their books. That's something that I like to do um, and add that personal touch like Miss Lanise did. Um, you know, putting your websites on it, putting little thank you cards in there. Um, I think those are ways to add personal touch and, and the ways to uh, connect with your customers even more so they can really appreciate the work that you put into your books instead of just receiving a book you know here open it up okay there it is something fell out or i saw the, the the pictures and i saw the vibrancy of of all of the covers i mean the covers are are amazing Pretty. these covers are amazing and they're they're beautiful um they they fit what it is that the books are about um and they're just they're just very, 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 I, I received them and I received them with love. And I felt the love when I received all of your books. Um, Miss, uh, Miss Lanise, tell everybody how they can find you in your books. So just change my name so people can find me quick. Lanise Leeds, Lanise Leeds, mm -hmm. um, dot com. So you can find my books there or me anywhere, Lenise Leeds, you can find me and you'll be able to connect to um, me and you can find my books on my website there as well. Very so, nice. Thank you. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Desan, how can we find you? And I know you have a couple of different platforms. So how can we find you um, and your books? Yes, everything is under my name, Desan Ahanu. My website is DesanAhanu.com and the so where you can purchase um, purchase the books right now is dasanahanustore.com. And so as long okay. as you use my name, you'll be able to find it. Gotcha. Dasanahanustore.com. I've got it. And if you are wondering what I'm doing, I'm putting the links into um, the chat where on my page, but it should should most likely be on your pages too. So I'm putting it on in the, the comments so that people can see it because we do have people that are watching, people are asking questions, they're commenting. So I wanna make sure that everybody um, can find your books and be able to find you. Miss um, Valerie, how can we find your books? Um, my website is www.genword.org. It is on Amazon, but you know, not that this Amazon, but they don't, they're not real nice to, in terms of royalty. So I'd rather yeah. people um, yeah. be directed to the website. Again, it's www.genword.org. Can you spell genword? Because I don't want to assume that it's what I'm thinking. G-E-N-W-O-R-D. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> genword. Okay. 
Um, okay, so we have a couple of, a couple of minutes. Would anybody like to share anything that I have not said? And I see Ms. Vicky, she ready. Go ahead, yes. Ms. Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I really want to emphasize the name of my chapter is I Am Still Here. And I it is about suicide. And the reason that I wanted to highlight that is we just came out of a pandemic. Well, actually, we're still in it. And, you know, Valerie talked about their, the depression. There is a lot going on in this last year. And also um, the, uh, the racial tension. It's just a lot going on. And even with our children not being able to go to school and they were under a lot of pressure. So this year I am dedicating my time to talk about suicide. And people ask me, why would you tell? I, okay, I am a four time suicide survivor. They said, why are you telling your business like that? Because I think this is the time that it needs to be heard. Suicide is like the third leading is the third cause of death in those ages 15 through 19. That's, that's, that's young people there. That's, that's young people. And so it, you know, it, it's important that we talk about that. Um, our women, our young women are facing so many challenges as well and our young men. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk about it this year. I want to talk about cyberbullying and how all of that leads to, you know, suicide. Uh, I, I, I just think it's important, especially in our community, African-American community, because it was like, for a long time, it was so taboo. Black people don't, don't commit suicide. Black <laughs> people don't uh, have, they don't have, they don't go to therapy. They don't yeah. see counselors. They don't, they don't, they don't. But it's, important to know that is not taboo you can see a counselor you can win you can talk to some talk to somebody so i just want to say that that is my mission this year to talk about it let's let's talk about it i want to be as transparent as i can so and and it, it, this is not the end this is not the end look at me look at what i would have cut off of myself from 15 years, 15 years old, I, I, I attempted my first suicide. Look what I would have stopped myself from becoming. And so it's important that we talk about that, especially to our children, our babies. Come on, let's talk about it. I so agree. I just wanted to say that because I, I, I'm on a mission this year uh, to, to help our young people get to where they need to be. So I didn't want to take all that time to do that, but it was just so yeah. important that I highlight that, that it's important that we, parents talk to your children. Yes. Talk to your yes. baby. So can, can I ask Miss Vicki? So I do a Facebook Live that streams into an online radio show that my, my sister and I do. Would you come on and talk? Absolutely. What? That would be great. Absolutely. Okay. We'll connect. See, look at us collaborating. <laughs> um, I wanted to tell you, tell you, Miss Vicky, um, I am a uh three time survivor of suicide. Um, so if there is if you ever have a platform that you um want someone to share their stories, please reach out Absolutely. to me. I would love to talk more about it. That's one on. thing I don't talk about enough. Um, but it is something that I feel that I should talk about more. So, um, I'm definitely there. If you have a platform and you need somebody, to, you. <laughs> yeah, please reach out to me. Cause I, I really think, and you're right, this pandemic has people, uh, experiencing deep depression, stress, the domestic violence rates are off the charts. There's yeah. so much that is going on in our society and, and our, our youth, they're, they're getting it pretty, pretty bad too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just want to put that out there that if you, if you need somebody to, to share, thank you. I, I'm, I'm willing to share. Um, anybody else want to share some great things with us before we get off tonight? Well, I just want to close and 
my final words would be like um that my hope is that um hopefully that something that you heard today will spark something in you whether it is to to buy a book or to start your journey you know um whether you buy a book now or you buy a book later, um, whether you decide, you know, something that somebody said has sparked an interest that you decide, you know, I want to follow and, and follow that person, find out more about what they're doing, or maybe something that is shared, share the broadcast, because if it, if it sparks something in you, maybe it'll spark something in somebody on your timeline that will interest them as well. Um, but I encourage you to definitely pursue that which is inside of you. So my hope is that you have left full. So rather you buy a book or not, hopefully you will support, but my ultimate goal is that you will live out your fullest. I, I hope that like with everything going on that people have decided just to say yes to themselves. That in the midst of all of this that we come out stronger knowing that tomorrow is not promised and understanding that I'm going to live my fullness today. So I'm not going to live in fear anymore. That fear can no longer have me. It can't, I'm not going to be bound to those things anymore. So whatever it is that you, that you desire to do and that you want to do, I hope that this conversation and just listening to all these powerful speakers and, and listening to their journeys. I mean, I've been inspired too. And oh, those covers. Oh, especially that one cover. Oh my gosh. With the shackles and all that. Like we, we're, we're, we're breaking free of those and, you know, hearing those stories and things like that, like let's break free together. Like we're stronger together. And by sharing your story, you're helping uplift other people as well. So I just want to thank you, Tiffany, for bringing us together, creating a platform, you know, it's, it's opportunities like this where we come together and, and we're able to do that. So I'm very grateful for you. And I'm very grateful for hearing everybody today. So thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate that. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Um, I want to say thank you to um, everybody that has come on to the author showcase tonight. Um, right now I'm working on announcing who the winners of our books are. And for some reason, I'm having a hard time getting to the comments. I don't know why. So I might have to announce um, a couple of them after we finish, but I do have three of them already. So um, Miss Ella Johnson, you inquired about putting your stories into plays or film rights. So I am going to make sure that it's unavoidable now, Miss Vicky, that <laughs> because she is going to um, be getting your book. Um, so Miss Ella Johnson, you have won Miss Vicky Evans' book, Gracefully Broken. And I'm gonna make sure that I connect the two of you. I'm gonna actually be the one mailing it out unless Miss Vicky decides to send it to you herself. Otherwise, I'm gonna be mailing it out to you, but I am going to connect you two ladies um, so that y'all can talk about maybe writing that Broadway play. You never know. You never know what can come out of these connections. We never know. Um, the, our next book is Miss The Seven Day Journey to Discovering Your Purpose from Miss Lenise. Um, this book right here, I'm trying to, I'm looking at who is commenting. So I haven't decided yet because I'm trying to see everyone who's commenting and see what their comments are because I want to make sure that this book goes to someone that I, I see um, needs it, um, but also that I feel can benefit from it. So I will let you know, Miss Lenise, who this book is going to go to from the comments or and from people that have been been watching. Um, Miss Valerie's book, the book club number two, is going to Miss Tammy Thomas. Miss Tammy Thomas, she has been on the whole time. And she has been listening, she's been commenting, she's been sharing. She is also a published poet and a published author herself. Um, she was on our first author showcase. So I know that she is gonna love this book because I know Miss Tammy and I know what kind of things she likes, I think, as her friend. So Miss <laughs> um, Valerie is has won Miss, um, I'm sorry, Miss Tammy Thomas has won Miss Valerie's book, um, Carol's Return, the book club number two. 
And then for me, for reality check, Miss Tierra, you were watching and you have been watching the last couple of um, Speak Up and Inspire series podcasts and also a couple of the author showcases. So Miss Tierra, you are going to be getting my book, Reality Check. And then Mr. Desan, which book would you like to offer to one of our guests? <laughs> I saw that valley. <laughs> what did I do? Did I do something wrong? <laughs> no. No, I was excited because you said offer to one of our guests. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, she said me. Yes. <laughs> I missed that. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Design, which book will you be um sharing with one of our guests tonight? Um, well, the the well what we'll do is um the the last two are part of a, se are a series, and so they it's be, you know it's best to experience them together. So, okay. So, so then everything we're fighting for is shackled freedom. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, that is okay. So, Miss Lanice, I need to find a winner for your book, and for some reason, I'm not seeing the comments and so forth while we're on for some reason. So, I will be announcing that when we get off tonight and then Mr. Desan, I will also be announcing the winner of your book when we get off tonight. It will be in the comments and I'll make sure that I connect everybody with the winners of their books. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you everybody for coming on to the author showcase. Um, this is going to be the third author showcase that we have had. I feel that this one was very successful like the other two, but I feel that we made some really good connections tonight. Um, we there's, there's a lot going on right here on this platform <laughs> with all of us and I'm really excited. And I hope that you, that all of us will be able to continue staying connected and doing some things together. Um, um, and I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all coming on and spending the time with me on the Speak Up and Inspire series. I'm just going to end with, again, reminding everybody that this month is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And please take the time to educate yourselves and your families. It's very much needed. Um, I also want to go ahead and add in there that mental health right now is very, very important. Yeah. So if you are experiencing depression, if you're experiencing anxiety, as an author, I wanna suggest that maybe you start journaling and then maybe you start writing your story and see if that can be helpful as a form of therapy for you. That doesn't take away the importance of talking to a professional or talking to someone who has the training and has the education to be able to help you. And if that is something that you're not comfortable with, please reach out to a friend. We don't wanna lose you. We want to make sure that you are here with us. Um, we have two survivors here on the, on the um, author showcase tonight of suicide. Please reach out to a friend, reach out to someone that you trust, reach out to someone that you know that you can talk to and try journaling, try writing, try putting your story on paper. And I don't wanna say I promise you, but I'm gonna highly, highly say, <laughs> based on all of the authors tonight, that writing can be therapy. Try it, you might actually like it. So thank you everybody. And thank you to all of our authors for being on tonight and stay tuned so that I can announce the winners of Miss Lenise's book and Mr. Desan's book. Have a great night, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.